Hey, what's up guys? Austin back with another video and today I am in the Orange Theory studio on the stationary bike today and that is going to be today's topic is how to maximize your cardiovascular performance here on the bike. Whether you need it as an option due to an injury, you know, whether you can't run or you're looking for just something to switch it up, getting your workout done here on the bike can be just as effective as getting it done on the treadmill as long as you know how to do it right. And so today we're going to talk about how you do it right. Now before you can really learn to push yourself on the bike, you got to make sure that you're set up properly. So make sure that as you adjust the seat height on the bike, that as you pedal, you're able to almost straighten your legs to the bottom. We don't want to lock out our knees. We also don't want a huge bend in our knees as we pedal. We want our legs to get as much of a range of motion as possible without locking out the knees. Also, make sure that your seat is adjusted so that your knees aren't going super far forward over your toes as you pedal. So back up that seat a little bit if you need to. That way your knee isn't lurching forward and you're not going to create any excess knee strain. And as far as where to put the handlebars, we're just put it at a comfortable position. Whether you like it a little bit lower or a little bit higher, get it into a comfy spot where you can get ready to do some work. Now, in order to truly maximize your performance on the bike, you got to be familiar with the numbers on your screen. Of course, in the bottom left-hand corner, you have the gear or the resistance. And the higher that this number is, the harder it is going to be to pedal. And this is a great tool because it can scale to all levels of fitness, whether you're just getting into fitness or you're more of the advanced fitness type. You know, the variety of different gears allows anyone to really push themselves depending on what resistance works best for them. And we'll get into that a little bit more in a second. You've got your distance down in the bottom right, which is important to use. If you're basing it off of treadmill distance efforts, your bike efforts are going to be about four times as long. So let's say on the treadmill side of things, you're supposed to run a mile. Well, on the bike, that would be four miles or half mile on the treadmills would be two miles on the bike. So your distance is there in the bottom right. And as far as the big numbers go on the screen, you've got your timer, which is sitting sort of right above the gear and the distance. And then above that, you have your watts, which alternates with the calorie burn, which you don't really need to pay attention to that because you've got your heart rate monitor on, you're tracking your calories more accurately that way anyway. But the watts, just like you would see on the rower, are showing you how hard, how much power you're generating as you bike. And it's an important number to be mindful of as you are cycling. And then the last number on top is your RPM or your rotations per minute, essentially telling you how fast your feet are pedaling. So if my feet are pedaling like this, my RPM is increased if I spin faster or the RPM goes down if your legs start to spin slower. So now that we're familiar with the different numbers that we see on our monitor, now we can start manipulating the gear, our RPM, and our watts to really achieve the best workout that we can on the bike. Orange Theory's general guidelines for base, push, and all out are right here, as well as sort of what you would want to aim for for a hill climb effort. Now let's take a closer look at these. If we look at a base, remember, a base is a challenging but sustainable effort. Remember, you want to be able to hold a base for 20 to 30 minutes if you had to. So we need to find that for us as some combination of gear and RPM. And according to the parameters here, we want the RPM somewhere between 80 and 100. Typically, I encourage members to aim for somewhere closer to 80 to 90 RPM. 90 RPM is a very common like tempo cycling pace, and so that's usually what I aim to shoot for. 80 to 90 RPM with a gear at least six or greater. It says six or greater, but a lot of you are gonna need way more than gear six in order to find that effort that for you, remember it's different for everyone, for you is challenging but still sustainable for 20 to 30 minutes. For me personally, that happens to be gear 15 at about 90 RPM. That seems to be sort of my challenging but doable base pace, but I'm a taller person, I'm super involved in fitness, that's my gear, yours might be a lot different. But if you're at a certain gear and you're able to have RPMs that are higher than 100 at that gear, well then that means you just need a little bit more resistance, again, to find that base feeling. So try to stay within that parameter of 80 to 100, but I would err on the side of 80 to 90. You have to experiment with that. But once you've got it, 
You should know your base. You should know. My base on the bike is gear 15 between 85 and 90 RPM. That way when you come down from pushes or you know, whatever the, whatever you might be trying to do, you know what base to settle into. That way you're not just uh, resting or just letting things happen. That base combo of gear and RPM should be a number that you know and remember. So play around with it, establish your base, and then you can go from there. Now, as far as going from there goes, we move into pushes, which are the tough efforts, right? The challenging efforts that elevate our heart rate that are much more sort of an uncomfortable based effort. The orange theory parameters are 90 to 105 RPM at a gear that's at or higher than your base gear. It's important to remember that our push is not just one number. There is, yes, we have our base, which is a number and an RPM combo, but a push can vary, right? It could be a three minute push. It could be a one minute push. It could be a 30 second push. All of these variety of pushes are going to have to be approached differently. But my general rule of thumb is again to keep the RPM no higher than 100. They say 105, but no higher than 100 or so and adding on the gear necessary to make it feel uncomfortable. Like that's in the, in the end, like numbers are schmumbers. You got to make that push feel tough and uncomfortable. So depending on how long a push might be, you might add a gear or add two or add three gears, or you might just keep your base gear and just add more RPM instead because that would elicit more challenge. It all just sort of depends on what sort of push is being asked of you. So listen to that and also talk to your coach too if you're a little confused. Now going into an all out, this is the range where we really want to take that RPM to 100 RPM or higher. However, there is an upper limit. You don't really want to go past about 120 RPM because then your legs are just spinning like crazy and to get more of a true all out burn and really build your fitness, try to keep that RPM no higher than 120. So if you're blasting past 120, just add more gear. Keep adding gear. Eventually you'll get to the point where you can't keep it over 120. But aiming for around 100 to 120 RPM, that is a great goal for an all out. And again, as much gear as you can, depending on how long the all out is. Your 30 second all out should look different than your one minute all out. It all takes experimentation. But the idea in the end, once again, is about the feeling. You need to make it feel tough. You need to make it feel like an all out if you're going all out. And that's gonna take some experimentation on your part. So it's your job. Take personal responsibility. Not to just let things happen. Not to just say, oh, this isn't nearly as hard as the treadmill. Make it as hard. Pay attention to the gear. Pay attention to the RPM. Figure it out and make it really tough for you. And if you really push yourself, hold yourself to your base when you need to stay at a base, really push for those pushes and those all outs, you're gonna get a whole lot out of that bike workout. So I hope this can provide some guidance and instruction for getting it done here on the bike. It's a great alternative to the treadmill portion of the Orange Theory workout. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video.